Uh, first study is going to be regarding objective measurement uh, and assessment of uh, sports related concussion injuries. Um, particularly focusing on our rugby teams. Uh, in the United Kingdom, it's becoming more prevalent, um, the kind of response and, and the um, understanding around concussion injuries in contact sports, um, particularly rugby, also um, football or soccer. Um, I, I believe I've worked in the US, uh, as, as Leah said, um, and really the US is probably a few years ahead of uh, the UK in, in the realisation of this. And I think that we are now starting to see more and more players, um, ex-players, particularly um, high-level rugby players who are developing other neurological conditions as a result of concussion injuries sustained over periods of time. Uh, but I'm going to talk to it uh, about that project because we're using wearable sensors to assess people with concussion injuries. The other project that we've got going on, um, again, related to uh, the use of wearable technologies, um, particularly for this one, the Dorsa V technologies, um, we're looking at assessment of runners. Um, so another fa factor is that as a physiotherapist, um, we have a lot of it, a lot of people come to see us in MSK and orthopedic clinics sometimes for running related injuries. Uh, and this may be a, an acute injury or it could be something that's more chronic and ongoing or something that they've had in the past uh, and they potentially recover, feel like they've recovered from it, but they may still have um, issues that are going on. So we're doing a study to try and use wearable technologies to try and assess runners to make it so that we basically um, can get some more detailed information about their running pattern. So the first study I'll talk about, um, if Leah clicks to the next slide for me, is the uh, sports related concussion study. So typically um, somebody who gets a sports related concussion, so somebody gets a head injury during a, um, a rugby match, a, a football game, um, anything anything really sports related. Um, it's it's a, what we call a subjective assessment. And that really means that um, we, we use clinical judgment and pen and paper assessments largely. Um, if we look at, the most used um, assessment in the world is the sports concussion assessment tool, uh, which is on its fifth version at the minute. And it's a big consensus tool that's agreed upon by uh, world experts and clinicians all around the world. Now, part of the problem that we face as clinicians when we're assessing people with these clinical tools that we have is that they may not be sensitive enough to pick up some of the problems that we see. So in the UK alone uh, for rugby, um, the incidence of concussion has actually substantially grown over the last uh, decade. We are seeing, uh, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner there, substantial numbers uh, per thousand hours of, of, of playing time. Um, and this is just growing as we, as we go on. I think part of that growth is probably due to the fact that clinicians are getting a little bit better at spotting it um, with their clinical judgment, but there's still no gold standard um, with the assessments of concussion. Part of that problem really stems from the fact that um, a lot of the assessments we do are, are kind of based on just a, a clinician's vision. So we kind of would look at a participant, uh, a person who's potentially got a head injury, assess them doing various different movements, standing balance, um, maybe doing some um, cognitive repeating tasks, but it may not be again, sensitive enough to um, pick up their problems. The other problem with that is obviously um, the sports related concussion tool there, um, a lot of people use it as a baseline assessment. So they'll use it pre-season and then they'll use it during the season to see if the individual has any problems. Part of the problem with that is that, that athletes are, are quite good at uh, being able to not cheat the system, but they, they may not perform as well as they possibly could do in the baseline assessment so that then later on, when they are assessed again, um, they know what level they need to get to. They know how many numbers they need to repeat um, and they'll hit that level and they'll make sure that they can hit that level. Now, this is where really the fact that there's no gold standard in the assessment and it remains largely a clinical assessment, um, clinical diagnosis, I should say. Um, largely, that is part of the problem. And that's where we're hoping to use some wearable technology to intervene. So if Leah clicks to the next slide for me, this is our um, current study that we have. So I, I have a PhD student, uh, Dylan Powell, uh, along with uh, Dr. Alan Godfrey, who's an engineer who works with me in, in the university. And we have a study that's looking to objectify um, some of the uh, assessments that we do um, with some of the participants. So 
we're investigating a rather large cohort of our uh, university level rugby players. Um, so these are quite high level rugby players, most, most of which um, will go on to have professional contracts into some level um, with, with some high level Premier League teams and things like that, a lot of them already signed up. And we've got 100 players, both men and women, um, and we're looking at a range of different metrics. So we're basically using objective tools to understand and assess concussion with the hope that in the future, potentially we could have uh, some individuals um, using these tools within clinical practice to actually help us assess and diagnose concussion related injuries. So we have a, a range of different tests we do. Uh, so we look at uh, cognitive function. We use the UNC Chapel Hill uh, brain gauge for that. It's a, a, a sensor for, the, uh, for touch. We also use eye tracking assessments. Uh, so sensory function, looking at vision and eye tracking using uh, mobile eye tracking devices. And then we have a range of devices that we use for mobility assessments. And mobility, I mean, balance, walking and running. So um, we have a range of different tests that we already do. So the sports concussion assessment tool, we do a lot of balance testing on that, um, but it doesn't really tell us very much about their functional capabilities. The problem for, for us really understanding whether a player is ready to go back to play is understanding whether they're gonna be able to perform the tasks that they are potentially going to do during play so we do walk-in assessments but the main thing we're using the dose v system for which is is really useful for us is to understand whether individual players are back to say a running gait pattern that they would be used to um, so i've done a lot of research in the past that has linked um walking mobility with cognitive function with brain activity with different neurological groups and different neuro neurological deficits and when we come to a sporting population, really, we need to understand what it is that they're, they're doing as part of their practice. And that is really um, running, really, is, is most, most of the time. So we are looking at trying to use some of these metrics that you get off the dose of each system, particularly things like uh, ground contact time, uh, tibial accelerations, in order to understand gait, running gait patterns and then link those specific gait metrics to uh, underpinning cognitive and sensory deficits that might be occurring due to the fact that people have got neurological problems after having a head injury. Uh, and really what we're trying to do there is we have people run on um, treadmills. Um, so I suppose similar to kind of um, some of the work in, in America looking at the uh, Buffalo treadmill protocol and things, but we're using the sensors to, to uh, capture people's typical running gait at baseline, so pre-season. And then we also get them after they've had their, in, their head injuries. And then we follow that up uh, after they've ha had uh, a week and then another week of, um, of uh, recovery. So typical recovery time is, is said to be around two weeks for a concussion. We know, we know from a lot of the literature though that potentially people have very subtle deficits that just aren't detected with a lot of our subjective tools. So we're using these wearable technologies repeatedly to try and understand if there are any um, recoveries in that time period, as well as if um, we can pick up on subtle deficits that are occurring as a result of their head injuries. So you can see the sensors are, are really, for the running anyway, are really quite small. Um, we stick them onto the, the shin. Uh, you can see the, the picture in the middle there of someone running on the treadmill, that white area on his shin is, is where the, the sensor has been placed. Um, and Essentially, we get people to, to run on the treadmill for a period of time. We also get them to run over ground outside for a period of time, um, similar to our running study. And then we examine what the results are. Um, and we compare that those results to baseline. We also track them over time, as I said, in the period of recovery. Uh, and we also are comparing it to potentially rugby players who haven't had head injuries as well, so that we can see if there's any differences between in the running gait patterns with healthy controls or not. We hope to really um, use these devices in the future to uh, essentially get some metrics that potentially are key and central to these deficits. And then they could potentially be used for assessment tools in the future for anybody that might suffer a head injury during a sports related concussion. Um, the user for the de devices that we use are, are relatively user friendly and um, so we can use them for clinicians and things as well so we've we work with a lot of clinicians on these projects as well because we have our physiotherapists within the university rugby teams as well as our links to um, other local um, football clubs rugby clubs as well so we try to work with a range of clinicians on our work so that we make sure that 
um, the research tools that we're developing and the things that we are looking into um, can be use, useful for clinicians. So I'll just go pause that because I think Kerry was going to ask me some questions. <laughs> 